Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Foff Expression 710. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the machine. So to start with, this is where you plug in your power. This is where you plug in your foot control. Here we have storage for your um, stylus. A nice place to keep it secure where you know where it is. Here we have a USB port, and that's going to be for like if you do updates on your machine and also for storing uh, sequences and things. You can store them on a USB stick right here. Then we have your hand wheel, and you know what that is. You just It goes around when you're uh, sewing. Then we also have a nice handle. Now this is a nice long handle that uh, carries your machine well. Here we have the cover, and you have your beautiful stitch chart. Over here we have where you would measure your button for buttonholes. And um, it's a great way to make very precise buttonholes. Here we have the spindle for winding your bobbin, a thread cutter for once you're done winding your bobbin, you can just cut your thread with a thread cutter right there. Here we have an auxiliary spool pin. Now your regular spool pin is right here, but this would be if you're doing twin needle sewing, you'd have an auxiliary spool pin right there. Your regular spool pin will also sit upright. And then we have threading guides for bobbin winding and for threading. And it goes down here. Now up here is your take up lever. It's inside the machine. Uh, you also do not have a dial for doing your, um, your tension. That would be right here on the touch screen. And then down here we have a needle threader. Really nice handy thing to have. And here is your walking foot, or your IDT, your integrated dual feed. So it, uh, you can either engage or disengage, depending on what you want to do. Over here, there's a thread cutter. So once you're done sewing, cut your thread like that, or use your scissors, or you can use the thread cutter button there. Then you have your uh, needle plate, which has your nice markings for doing a nice 5 8 inch seam or whatever uh, width of seam that you want to do. And your bobbin goes right in there. The cover slides right on like that. Then we have the tray. Now the tray is really nice because it has a front compartment. You can lift that out and, and you can put extra things down inside there. Then you have the back compartment here for uh, items that you don't use quite as regularly. And then this comes off, which makes it really nice for sewing your pant legs, like if you had jeans that you wanted to hem and put that right around there. It's really nice for that. Okay, let's put this back on. Right here, we have a switch for lowering your feed dog. So if you're gonna do free motion quilting or thread painting, you would just push this and it would lower the feed dog so you would move the fabric with your hands. Up here, we have the reverse button. Now, if I am not sewing and I push that, that means now it's gonna sew in reverse for the full time until I push it again. So to, the way to do a reverse at the beginning and ending of your seam is you start sewing, then you press and hold, and as soon as you're done sewing, you let it up. But it's not going, obviously, right now. So I'll show that to you once we get into uh, basic sewing. And then these are indicator lights. As you can see, when I push, push this, this indicator light means it's gonna sew in reverse. So that's what that means. Um, this is your Instead of having a, a lifter lever, this is how you lower your presser foot and how you raise your presser foot. Now, a second push of the raised presser foot push it, puts it up a little higher. This is great for lofty things like a fleece or if you have a spongy material and you need a little extra lift, you've got that. Now, this one lowers your feed dogs. A second push will lift it up a little bit, which is really nice for if you're trying to uh, position something just right under the foot. You can just press the lower uh, presser foot button a second time. Okay, and then this button is more about for sequencing. If you have a sequence of stitches and you want to start at the beginning of that sequence of stitches, that's the button you push. This is a tie-off button, and what this does, similarly to this one here, but it, what it does is it just takes a couple little stitches, so it ties like a small knot that you see on the back of your fabric. It's a, a nice little feature, but fairly secure too. This is your start stop button. Now this will work even though you have your foot control plugged in. 
This is nice for if you're doing like a buttonhole because it has an automatic stop. All the buttonholes do at the end. So you can just press that, do your buttonhole, and it will stop at the end. This is also good for if you're free motion quilting and you want to um, just keep it going at a steady speed without uh, pressing on your uh, pedal, foot pedal. Now, if you're free motion quilting, you might want to slow things down. That's what this is for here. Now, I'm going to show you a long press. Every time you have that little um, arrow at the corner, do a long press, and it opens up options. For this, if I wanted my free motion quilting to be really slow, I could move this little, down, little bubble down the slider. Now it'd be really slow so that every time I push that's full speed right there. Every time I push this slow, it's going to be really slow. So if you're learning your machine, you may want to slow it down. On the other hand, if you just want it a little bit slower, press and hold this again and raise this up. Now that's all the slower is going to be. It's like three quarters of your speed. I kind of like to have it down in the middle like that. Okay. And then you have your needle up, needle down. And this refers to not only whether your needle is down, like for instance, I can go down like this or up like this, but if this is on, that means that once you're done sewing, it's going to stop with the needle down. And also, you notice it's on a pivot function, which means uh, needle down. Needle would be in the fabric, but you can move your fabric, take a look at your stitches, and move it back without losing your place. If you have this on needle up, when you're stopping sewing, it's not going to raise the presser foot at all. Okay, lost my thread there a little bit. Um, and then this is your cutter button. The cutter is nice for if you're at the end of your seam and you wanna just cut your thread, push that, it cuts your thread and pulls the thread tails down to about oh, an inch long on the back of your fabric. It's a nice little feature. Then we have the touch screen, and I'm not going to get into the touch screen too much on this video, but just know that this is how you would adjust your uh, length and width of your stitches and a lot of other things. You can do sequencing on here, you can um, do free motion quilting, there's some options for that too. Just as a little tip on this, if ever you want to know what something is on this touch screen, just push this little question mark and then you can touch any one of these things and it explains what it is. And um, so that question mark is a really handy thing to have. So that's your overview on this machine and um, there's lots to this machine. I hope you watch my other videos that we have on this. So we also have a lot of other videos on other machines here on our YouTube channel. If you found this video to be helpful, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. So thanks for watching today. See you later. Bye.